Welcome to This One's On Me, where I, Sneh Dada, invite you to come and be a part of other people's lived experiences. So, today's guest is Mike De Silva, who tells the story of being in an entanglement without even knowing about it. My story is a bit about hubris. It's about why I don't drink red wine. Basically starts like this. So I leave university. I go, I rent a flat in Brom. And uh, I mean, it's a nice flat, it's a nice size and everything, but it's, oh, it's so noisy. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit sick of it, but I'm holding on for my girlfriend to come and live with me. And then from that point on, we're gonna move forward, right? So she eventually comes and I, I say, okay, let's embrace, let's embrace this lifestyle, you know. And after a few months, we decide, let's get a dog. So obviously dogs don't live in flats. They need a garden, they need a space to run around in and all of that stuff. So we start looking, we start looking. At the same time, uh, a friend of mine's mother decides that, you know, it's, uh, she needs to move out on her own and do this whole life. So she comes and she, sort of takes us in this whirlwind and we go and see this house. This is my friend's mother, by the way, not, not my mother. <laughs> um, so my friend's mother is like, cool, let's go and live in this house together as a commune. So it's me, my girlfriend and my friend's mother. So we're like, cool. So we go, we move in and everything is great in the honeymoon phase of, of this whole process. A few months go by and she decides, well, hmm, you know, I'm not really, making it that well financially, you guys are gonna have to contribute a little bit more to the rent. So we're like, cool, you know what? It's a nice house, life's good. So we, we say, cool, we increase the rent a little bit. The next week, she buys a brand new car. Oh. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're like, oh, okay, this is a bit weird, but fine. Now we're trying to get the car into the garage, but the, uh, the door is not, uh, going up high enough so the car doesn't fit. So she breaks the one cardinal rule of suburban life, which is if you have a garage or a gate motor and it's working, don't touch it. Because <laughs> if you touch it, it will never work again. So anyway, that rule gets broken. And now we've got this garage which opens randomly or sometimes it doesn't open at all. It's just completely disconnected. Lo and behold, mysteriously, one day the garage motor goes missing. So the people who own the property obviously get annoyed and now there's this escalating context, but instead of, uh, instead of de-escalating the situation and making it all calm and, you know, like, sorry, apologizing for the mistake, she decides at six o'clock in the morning, it's time to start playing opera music. <laughs> now, personally speaking, I love all types of music, but I don't think that there's a person on this planet who would want to hear opera blasting through their uh, windows at, at 6 a.m. especially not before a cup of coffee so this is obviously making the situation worse there's other people living on the property as well who are also getting irritated with this whole thing and so it starts bubbling it starts bubbling it starts bubbling so we decide cool let's be zen my girlfriend and I start doing yoga classes every day right just to get out of the space calm down relax you know savasana all of that stuff so one day at night time, we open the door, we get home. There's this woman lying on the ottoman in like a long silk dress with a big glass of red wine, like she's Daisy Buchanan. And she's just living her best life. We're like, oh, hi, how are you doing? And then she looks over at us and she calls my girlfriend over and she holds her hand on my girlfriend's chin like this. And she says, shame, you know, you must be really stressed because your skin looks awful. <laughs> Which obviously didn't go down well. So now, now there's this situation happening, right? So now there's internal conflict as well within this whole commune. She's getting more and more annoyed. We're getting annoyed with her. Everybody's not, it's, 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 getting, it's getting tense. Next morning, I walk up, I'm getting ready for work and she looks at me and she says to me, your bum looks nice. So now I'm busy thinking, what is going on here? First she started attacking my girlfriend. Now 
you're starting to objectify me. What is, what is the situation? And so things start clicking into place and I start remembering other circumstances like when she brought me flowers and things like that. And so I start realizing that I'm being recruited for like a cult. So <laughs> this is like getting a little bit scary for me because I'm like, what is, what is happening in my life? How did, the, how did it come to this point? And I realized, and this is where the hubris of the situation comes in, is that when you try to live a certain way because you believe, because you're entitled to that lifestyle, you can get yourself into trouble. Things take time to grow. Things take time to achieve. But anyway, it's too late because I'm like halfway in a cult now and I can't get out for the next like nine months. So I'm busy thinking, oh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So we decide, my girlfriend and I, we decide, okay, we have two solutions, right? We can confront the situation head on or, you know, we can just ignore it until it goes away. Uh, so we decide in my fantasy that we're going to confront it. And so we have arranged for a dinner with the other people on the property, the owners of the property, herself and me, and we buy some beautiful red wine, a 94 Merlot, a 2001 Pinotage, and you know, and everything's going very nice, and she contributes a 2019, this was happening in 2019, so just so you know, she contributes a, a 2019 red or something rather like that. So anyway, so we're all sitting at the table and she opens her wine and she pours it all around for us and we all take a drink and it tastes a little bit funny, but okay, cool. And then she starts playing some jazz music and we're like, okay, cool, you know, nice mood for the evening. Everybody's having a good time, you know? And then she starts walking around the table and slowly she begins to take off all of her clothes. And then I don't remember what happened next. All I can tell you is that the very next day, I got up, I packed my bags and I left. And that is my story of why I don't drink red wine. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike, I don't buy that story. There is clearly something you're not telling us. Surely you remember a bit more before the blackout. Thank you for joining us for another episode of This One's On Me. Until next time.